how are you? Happy Monday. There's been a lot going on. There's been a lot of hats going on. <laughs> Including, I cleared out my office slash craft room closet and found the bag of finished objects. Among which were a lot of hats. So I pulled out all the hats and there were 13 finished hats ready for donation or gifting. So I've add those, added those to my stack. I have 15 new hats working at number 60. <laughs> Seven of which have been knitted since we last chatted. So stressful times make for busy fingers, which was, you know, it's a, it's a healthy coping mechanism. Let me tell you about the hats. Since that's like all I've been making is just hats. So a couple of the old ones that I thought were especially pretty is this one, which is called the Neon Ski Bonnet. And that's by Lacey Volk. And I just put some little like, little holly berry accent I thought would be cute besides plain. Just cause uh, kind of fun. It's a very fairy tale esque kind of hat. And it's, the brim is double thick, so it's super cozy. It would be delightful. It's a little bit small for my head, but for a small woman or like a teen or even a kid, it'd be a great hat. So that's the first of the old. I made this last year. I did the hat last year. I put on the tassel and the ties and did a couple of accents a few weeks ago. But I'm still counting that as an old one. And then the next one, is this really fun? It's extra long, so it'd be a good slouchy hat. And it's called the Tide Knots Pattern by Justina Lorkson. And I will link all the patterns down in the description. And it's so pretty. And this yarn has a little bit of um, cashmere in it, so it's super soft. And then the last, I only picked three of each to show you. So the top three. The last of the old hats. This is the Perky Little Hat by Sharon Lynch. And this was actually my Super Bowl hat for, oh gosh, a few years back. I got the yarn in the bargain bin at, at Webb's during their Super Bowl party. And then I knit up this hat while we were watching the Super Bowl later that day. I've never done anything with it. It's a cute hat though. It's also just super smooshy and good. Although I don't love, the brim is actually like, it's kind of like lace, so it's got holes in it. And I don't like that around my ears. If I want a hat this cozy, I don't want a lacy ear band. So not my favorite pattern, but it was a very fun knit. And I think all of these patterns are free, which is like my favorite kind of knitting pattern. So of the newly knitted hats, I picked again my three of the recent ones since we last chatted. This is actually what I had just cast on the last time we chatted with the hand spun. And it's called the Little Frankie Hat by Casapinka. And it is a very fun, repetitive, I always like to see the insides of people's color work. So that's the inside of my color work. And I really like the way it turned out. It's a super comfortable hat. And I just like the colors. And then these two I made back to back. And a friend joked that, um, I seem to be going to like a ski vacation themed knitting. So it just called me Sven. This is the Jason's Cashmere Hat by Melissa Thompson. Again, it's a super basic cabled hat, but it's a very satisfying knit and it works for a lot of people. Sometimes I think the pattern has it as a folded over brim. I just didn't feel like knitting five inches of ribbing. So I just went for single. And then this isn't the most recent hat I've knit, but it is the last one I have to show you. 
this isn't actually the full pattern. I stole the color work from the basic Norwegian star hat by Carla Jo Knapp. And then I just plopped it onto a basic. It's not even a pattern. It's just I've knit a lot of hats so I know what decreases I needed. And uh, it's, it's again, very fun. There's the inside pretty, yeah. And then again, the inside. Which, it's the inside, so like, no one's gonna really see it. But I always think the inside of stranded color work is so pretty. Usually, it can get messy, but usually it's really pretty. And then the one I'm working on now is, as per theme, ribbing. No hat starts out particularly interesting, but this is eventually going to be the scrap hat, sorry, the scrap yarn hat by Meiju Kepi, who is from Helsinki. And I was in Helsinki a few years back for Pride and just, I was in the area. Really beautiful city, fantastic parks. I did not get to, no, I tell a lie. I did get to a, a yarn store in Helsinki and I bought a really pretty yarn that I will see if I can find a picture. If so, I will add that in here. Beautiful little yarn store, very colorful. That's right. So for, I traveled for four or five months and a lot of the cities I was in didn't really have good yarn stores for assorted reasons, but Helsinki actually had a really nice yarn store. So yeah, let me see if I can find that picture. But anyway, so I'm gonna do black with this, which as you can tell was already knitted into something. Um, you might recognize this yarn. It is also the brim for the Downton hat that I showed you earlier. And it is, it's lovely, it really is, but it was given to me by um, some friends. It's exactly my kind of colors. So paired, it's gonna be pretty. I'll show you next time. But anyway, that's hat number 16 on the needles. And you might be asking yourself, Leo, what the heck are you gonna do with, you know, 30 plus hats? Good question, not real sure. If this was a normal year, the library in my hometown, which I live one town over from now, has a hat and sock tree in December that they gather donations of hats and socks, and then they donate it to local um, social service programs. So that's a really great way, especially because they do accept um, non-machine washable hats because that's a big issue everyone's like oh there's so many organizations to donate to and there are and they're fantastic but most of them only accept superwash they only accept hats that are usually out made out of acrylic or at the very least superwash which i completely understand if you need like the most wash and wear possible garment you're going to want superwash or acrylic but most of what i have in my stash and most of what i like to knit with is not Super wash and it's definitely not acrylic. Although it's great for blankets. So since they're not super wash and they're not acrylic, I can't donate them to most of the organizations. And since we are in plague times, I don't think the library is doing their hat and sock tree this year. So my kind of alternate idea was since I know Again, due to plague times, money is tight for a lot of families, so Christmas gifts might be more challenging this year. I thought I could post my <laughs> hoard of hats on my community Buy Nothing group on Facebook and offer them to my community of if ever anyone needs a gift for somebody they love, I have these hats and you're welcome to them to give as a gift for these holidays. So I think I'm gonna do that. And then hopefully that'll take care of all of them. I think it will. I have a pretty active buy nothing group in my town. 
And if it doesn't, I have friends and I will get them to post them on their Buy Nothing groups and just keep giving away hats. Everybody needs a hat this winter. So that's currently my plan. Let me know if you can think of another good one. I have done some, you know, not extensive, but some somewhat quick Googling to see if I could find another uh, charity to donate it to or something of the like. I'm not finding much. Again, there's plenty, but they have restrictions on the materials it can be made out of, which I completely understand. Don't get me wrong, but it does pose an issue because these are not out of that and I'm not going to go buy yarn to knit hats to donate. Especially when <laughs> you're only seeing a little bit of it. There's a lot of yarn in my house. I have a very small house and I have a lot of yarn. <laughs> so that's the hat situation. Hopefully it'll be taken care of. But the, um, the swarm of hats will be ending soon because I'm only knitting them till the end of November. Starting December 1st, I start my little embroidered ornaments for the, it's the 12 days of Christmas. They're beautiful. They're little felt embroidered ornaments and I have like pattern and stuff for. I know it's the 12 days of Christmas, but I'm giving myself, I'm gonna spread it over the whole month. I'm give myself two days to make each one. So if I start on December 1st, I will have ornaments to work on all the way up till Christmas Eve. Is that enough time? I don't know. Is that too much time? I also don't know. We'll find out. If it's too much time, it's not really an issue because I, you know, definitely not without hobbies for options. But it'll be fun. And it'll be a nice kind of um, treat to look forward to every day something special to work on and that's beautiful and that I get to you know stitch my love into for years to come because they're definitely going to be an heirloom. I'm looking forward to it. They're going to be gorgeous. Anyway the only other thing I really had to tell you about was my mug. So this is my favorite coffee mug. It's, it was handmade by Amarita Lash who is in Massachusetts. So a local potter. I will include her Etsy in the link because she has beautiful mugs. And it is a very comfortable in the hand mug, <laughs> but the handle broke. So a few weeks ago, it was just being washed. Nothing bad happened. It wasn't dropped or anything, but the handle broke. So it's been sitting on my counter for longer than I would like to admit, waiting for me to go buy like Gorilla Glue or something to fix it. And I finally got around to getting the Gorilla Glue, and I get home, I sit down to fix the mug, and the Gorilla Glue is dry! I don't know how this happened. It was like in a fully sealed package, I just got it from Staples, and I got home and it was a complete, it was a solid chunk of Gorilla Glue in the bottom of the bottle. So the next day I took it back, traded it for a non-solid bottle of glue, and I fixed my mug. And I'm really pleased because you can't even tell where it was broken. And it was broken into three pieces. And you can really, you can barely even feel it. So I am, I am pleased. Although it was a challenge to actually fix and it Again, let's not t talk about how long it's been waiting for me to fix it, but it's fixed. I had my coffee in it this morning and it was delightful. So it's worth it, peeps. It is worth it to take the time to fix your things, especially when they're beautiful and handmade and you love them. Anyway, talk to you soon. Bye.